See, it says hard race there. There you go. Okay, we've got two 19 millimeters. One here, one here. And then on the opposite side of this bushing is a 22 mil. That's it, you leave those alone. That's all you need to take this off. Once you've rigorously messed with and taken off your whole entire U-brace, which is gonna probably be the hardest part of this. One, two, three sheared off, four, five, six, two 14 millimeters in the back, here, along the arm, up along here, here, and here, and then two more up here. These are the two 12 millimeters right up there. 22 millimeter nut off the back, and it kind of just you can move this arm a little bit by yourself. Up in here, just take a little pry bar right in that pivot point, and it'll give you leverage to just pull down on the control arm just enough so that you can get that 22 millimeter socket onto that bolt. There's a large hole and a small hole. That's going to make a big difference. The larger one is the one you're going to slide on first and then it tapers to the smaller hole here. You're going to put these on correctly, meaning if you look here, there's one part that comes straight off there and there's one janky part. Uh, you definitely want to line those up and make sure you remember which one they came out from. Like I remember this one came out of the right side, so it would be the passenger USDM. And I have to line that up. I used Mobile One Synthetic Grease for these bushings. And make sure that the washers are correct too. One will have a larger opening that correlates to the larger end as well as the tapered end. Now these would be installed backwards. You notice the janky end is opposite. Um, see it says hard race there. There you go. The fact of the matter is that Subaru wants you to press out these old inserts on their stock piece. Their stock aluminum piece I guess this is. And that's a pain in the butt. I don't have a press. I'm not going to be able to do it with just a, an old crusty Harbor Freight vise. So what we're going to do here is just get these. These are the anti-lift kit. These replace both the bushing and the actual aluminum. So these are the anti-lift kit version. They're going to change the suspension geometry a little bit. Um, I would suggest lubing everything up just really good because I was having squeaks on my stockers. So that's the whole reason this is happening in the first place is I believe the right one is haggard. Haggard garage beyond belief, so we're just going to put these in. This is on backwards. Remember I said about the janky part. So when installed correctly, the true heart decals are not visible. 22 millimeter is 140 foot pounds, and the two 19 millimeters are 184 foot pounds. I highly recommend this to anyone. I've been driving the car now like this for a little while now, a couple weeks. So I can give you an honest opinion, not just a first drive, oh, it feels great type thing. With the kit adding half a degree of camber up front. Funny thing about this is you didn't notice how much the front end of the car lifts up when you got on it and when you broke heavily until you put this mod in and realized how much it doesn't move now. Before, you just didn't realize it. You're driving the car around and you're saying, okay, that's just normal. It's, it's happened from day one, and as your suspension does get weaker, that lifting sensation when you get on it and you nose dive in the front when you brake, that'll accentuate with worn out springs and suspension, uh, front, All right, everyone. Thank you so much for checking out these videos. I'm getting tons of positive responses lately, and it's just overwhelmingly heartwarming that everyone is enjoying and finding some type of use for these videos, except just enjoyment and entertainment. Because as you know, I am not any type of filmmaker and or editor. So what you're getting is what you get. I'm doing the best I can. 
and I'm putting it out there for you guys. Hopefully it's getting a little better. Uh, let me know in the comments. Also, if you've been watching the Rich Rebuilds channel and his whole entire Tesla debacle, he bought a Tesla X and is having some serious troubles. Um, if Carvana is selling Teslas through them, I would go through Carvana because Carvana, they de have a decent grasp of just the whole entire sales process. And that's what it seems that they're having problems with with Tesla. So go check that out. Go check out my Carvana review. Everyone have a great 2019. We'll see you soon. SVT, WRC, later.